Anthropic just dropped the biggest product release, I think, since Claude Code itself, with the release of Claude Code in the browser and on mobile. And in this video, I'm gonna walk through exactly how Claude Code on mobile and in the web work, how it's very different than in the terminal and in your IDE, like we've been talking about on the channel, how you might use each of these applications and, and use cases of Claude Code for your projects, whether that be for software development or marketing, sales, ops, and it being kind of your personal assistant for everything. Hey, I'm Craig Hewitt. Welcome back to 100 Days of AI. Today, super excited to share everything I know about Claude Code in the browser on mobile with you so you can be more productive, get more stuff done, make your business more successful because that's what we're all about here. Okay, so in the browser first, and then we're gonna walk through the mobile onboarding experience. Claude.ai slash code is where you wanna go. There'll be a link in the description for this. And the first thing you'll notice here is both of these integrations have everything to do with GitHub as being kind of the place where you get information from and then send it off to do work. This is an entirely cloud-based application of AI. There's nothing on your computer that's actually happening. It's gonna pull content and context from GitHub over and let agents work on it and then push that back to GitHub. So GitHub being a kind of place where code is stored online, but this doesn't have to be only for code. We're gonna run through a code application of this and a marketing application of Claude code in the browser and on mobile. So you can see how you might use this for coding and how you might use this for a marketing or sales or ops project, okay? But the first thing we have to do in either case is to connect with GitHub. And so I'll click the connect with GitHub button here. It says, hey, Anthropic would like permission to view your identity, know which resources you can access and act on your behalf. This might be scary for you because any of you who kind of run a SaaS business or know what GitHub is, it is the place where one of your biggest sources of intellectual property live. But I trust Anthropic, I believe this is safe. And so we're gonna authorize this. Okay, so now it's asking me, set up your default Claude code environment trusted network access, no network access, or custom access. I'm gonna select trusted networks access because that's what it's recommended here. Okay, so now we see a pretty standard kind of setup if you've used any kind of AI technology before. So we're gonna ask it what to do up here. We're gonna select the repository and probably the branch over here. So I'm gonna select the repository I wanna work on first. And for the web application, we're gonna do coding. And for the mobile application, we're gonna do marketing work, okay? So we're gonna do one of our coding projects and ask it to go do a thing. And remember, this is gonna be agentic. So this is gonna be a big chunk of autonomous work. This is not gonna be, hey, change the color of this button. It's gonna be, hey, I want you to go, you know, create this whole piece of functionality for me in this project. This is not kind of nitpicky Claude code helping you do something. It's gonna be Claude code acting entirely autonomously. And the key here is what we'll do is review these changes in GitHub and approve them or not. That's kind of the step. So the agent's gonna go away, do a bunch of work, push it back to GitHub, and you'll be able to check the work like you would have in your IDE previously. Okay, so we're gonna select our repository here. And I'll just say, this has access to all of my GitHub repositories, which is a little scary. That's not exactly what I wanted. So I don't know that I would keep this on all the time, or if you have really sensitive information, you don't use Claude for everything, you know, I might be a little bit wary of this. Okay, so one thing that you wanna notice when you go in here is that this is going to show only public GitHub repos. All of these are just public repos. There are places that anybody can come in and kind of play around with. So that's fine. Uh, if you want to have this on a private repo, you'll need to come down here and install the GitHub app. It must be installed in all rep repositories where you want to use Claude code. Okay, so we're gonna say install this app because I just wanna use this on very specific projects. So you see in my GitHub, I have several different organizations. I just wanna install it on select repositories here that I wanna play around with, uh, with, with Claude code on, not everything, because I just don't wanna give that much access. Uh, okay, so I do I wanna find the, and here's the Catalyst project we were working on. This is the accountability buddy. Uh, project. Okay, so we're going to only install the Claude app, if you will, on this one private repository. Remember back here, this is all public repositories in this list. If you want private repositories, you got to install this code. Okay. 
Okay, I had to enter my two-factor authentication code and now it's taking me to the connectors area of my Claude settings area and I can see that GitHub is connected. If you ever get skittish and wanna undo this, you can disconnect GitHub and all of those permissions go away. Cool, okay, so now back here, I'll refresh this page, again, Claude code in the browser here, to select a private repository that I just uh, enabled with using the Claude app in GitHub. And I'm looking for the Catalyst one, and it's right here. And I only have one uh, branch, and so that's the default branch here. Okay, great. So now is just the regular prompting that you would have done in the terminal or in your IDE with Claude code and asking it to do stuff. So just for context, I'm gonna pull up the application in Cursor, which Cursor is our integrated development environment. Okay, and just for context, I have the project opened here in Cursor in my IDE, my integrated development environment. And we're just gonna run Claude here in the terminal or in the terminal in our IDE, and we're gonna run the application just so you can get some context, okay? So I'm gonna run Claude, and then I'm gonna ask Claude to run the application locally on my computer. And then we're gonna get a sense for things, and we're gonna ask Claude code in the browser, in the cloud, to go do stuff. So it's gonna run the application and it's gonna give us a URL and we're gonna click that and it's gonna open up the project and we'll be able to see kind of what kind of stuff we wanna do. Okay, so we have the application running here and uh, I think largely this is like all good, right? This does what we want it to do. I'm gonna ask it to create a way to log in and uh, create like a concept of a user and a password and things like that. So people can come in, this is an accountability tool. So people can come in, log in, review their previous uh, goals that they had set, things like that. Okay, so we're gonna come back to Claude Code in the browser. I'm gonna use Super Whisper on my computer here to just talk to Claude Code and ask it to do a thing. I want to create the concept of user accounts that have login so a customer can create an account, log in, view their previous goals and their progress towards those goals. So I'd like you to go create the concept of users, a login page, a way to set a password, a way to reset a password. And then within the account area, the account dashboard, I want you to uh, create a list of weekly goal setting entries that a user might have had and their progress towards those entries. Uh, please take care of that and just push the results of that as a PR to GitHub when you're done. Okay, PR being pull request, just a way to say, hey, I have this contribution I want to make. Please, you know, tell me what you think and approve it if you if you can. Okay, so I'm on this repo. I'm on the main branch. And this is going to go out and do work, right? Um, do you want to enable notifications? Yep, I do because I think this is pretty amazing and I can't wait to see what it does. Okay, so we've just done here like I would have done here if I would have given this the same prompt, okay? Now, a very, very, very important point here as we're gonna start showing mobile in just a second. What I do not want to do is give a project here uh, in the terminal in my local machine, on my phone, and in the browser that could conflict. So if I'm gonna be running multiple projects or agents in this case, because this is an agent, that's working right now. This is the implement user authentication and goal tracking agent, if you want to call it that, because it just pulled the, the code from GitHub, is working on it over here on the Anthropic server somewhere, and is going to push that back. I could do the same on my phone and say, hey, uh, go make the forgot password page light mode only. Then you would have a, a possibility for conflict between these two pieces of code. So we definitely don't want to do that. So if you're going to be working on the same project or repository here, make sure you try to work in different areas of it, okay? Okay, so what I'm doing here is before I start on mobile, because I wanna show a marketing activity on mobile, uh, I need to do the same thing with authorizing uh, Claude in GitHub for this Castos writer uh, repository. So I'm gonna do that, only this repository, and now I can see that this is all connected. Okay, so I'm gonna close this, I'm gonna close this and this agent is still running over here. Remember, this is the one that's creating authentication uh, in a dashboard area for our Catalyst accountability buddy tracker. That's cool. And now on mobile, we're going to select the repository, the Castos Writer repository, which is our virtual content writer AI employee that we created a few days ago. Okay, so I'm gonna select the repository here and 
it is the Castos Writer repository. Okay, so now I'm gonna use just regular speech to text on my phone and ask it to do something. I want to create a cron schedule to run a report of most exciting opportunities and biggest areas that I should focus my content efforts for in the coming week. I would like this to run every Monday at 7 a.m. Eastern time and deliver a report to me as a markdown document wherever you think best. Please go do this and ask any clarifying questions as you go. Okay, so now you can see I, it has the prompt here. Oh, I wanna create a prawn schedule. <laughs> it didn't, the voice to text didn't work as well. I don't have super whisper on my phone and so the, uh, okay, so it understood what I meant. Uh, let me first explore the code base to understand what's going on better. And so what's super interesting is you can see back on desktop here that uh, or in the, in the uh, not in desktop, in the browser, you can see this agent running over here as well. So I can see it on my phone and I can see it uh, running here. So on the phone here, uh, it's go running through this. It's saying, hey, I need to understand what's going on here, next steps. Um, it's just trying to understand the project right now, I think, because it's just reading through a bunch of context. That's cool. Um, and then, you know, I don't even know if you can associate like cron. Cron is just like a scheduled job of things to happen inside a Claude project. I don't even know if that's possible, but that's what I want to happen. And so if it's not possible, hopefully Claude will give me an answer and say, hey, you just can't do that. You need to do this other thing. Um, meanwhile, you know, this authentication agent is just running over here and it's been running for like, what, five minutes or something. Um, so pretty cool. And by the way, on both of these, or for my whole kind of setup here, I'm just on the pro plan within Claude. So it's like 20 bucks a month that I'm able to do all of this stuff. Okay, cool. So it's almost done here. It's pushing this uh, as a branch back to my uh, back to my GitHub, creating a pull request. Pull request is like a, a proposal to the owners of the project, which it's all just me, to say, hey, this is what I did. What do you think? Okay, so it doesn't have the ability to push back to GitHub, which is interesting. So, you know, we'll have to take a look at that. Meanwhile, on the mobile, the uh, writing script and the cron is still reading context, and it's going to be putting together a plan to add cron or some sort of scheduled job here soon. So while it's working here, I just want to say, like, what is a mindset shift, I think, for us is agents and autonomy with our projects. Because previously we had to be in cursor typing out stuff or speaking through Super Whisper for it to do stuff. Whereas now we don't, we can just say, hey, please go do this stuff. And it's doing it here on mobile or it's doing it here in the browser. And we don't have to be manually typing stuff. Now the downside is like, hey, like it just doesn't work as well or the agent doesn't have the context. Yeah, like 100% that, that could be the case. But I mean, if you've watched me kind of vibe code stuff in cursor here with Claude Code, you know that I don't give it a whole lot of context. I give it a prompt kind of like I did here. Uh, so I think that what will be the big difference is us learning how to work with agents succinctly so they can go be successful. That's the big mindset difference that we'll all have to kind of come to terms with and adopt as we embark on this part of using AI at work, okay? All right, so on mobile here, we have, um, okay, I have clear understanding of the code base, good news, the data analysis and report generation. Clarifying questions, before I implement the scheduled opportunity report, I need to understand deployment method. How would you like this to run? Okay, uh, system cron job, Docker container, GitHub actions. Um, hmm, I don't know. Probably GitHub Actions, I think that seems most reasonable. Uh, okay, so I'll just use this and type. So we're gonna use GitHub Triggers. Um, so number two, just save it to a folder. Uh, number three, analysis period, last seven days. Uh, let's so say last 30 days. Yep, priority focus. What kind of opportunities do I want? Oh. It just, it gave me recommendations. So you know what? We're going to go with all this. Go with your recommendations. That sounds great. Okay. So, you know, what, what it's done here, right? It's gone through and it's understood all of the project because this is this agent's first time doing any of this. 
Uh, and then it had some clarifying questions, which is amazing. Now uh, it said, hey, this is what I think we should do. And I said, cool, good job, go get them, <laughs> okay? Um, okay, so I think maybe my screen, <laughs> my screen recording might have failed here. But what happened here on mobile is it went away and did a whole bunch of research. Uh, and by the way, that's the cool, I guess that's the cool thing, right? Serendipity, my screen recording probably stopped when the phone fell asleep. Uh, but what happened is Claude just went and did a whole bunch of understanding of their project here. Uh, and then it said, okay, cool, I have these clarifying questions for you. How do you want to implement this thing? And I was going to say, oh, this and this and this. But then I said, cool, uh, you have recommendations. I like your recommendations. Just go with that. And so now it's going away and doing all of this work. And it will come back and create a pull request into GitHub for us to review the changes that it's made. Okay. And so we can go back and check on our other project what happened. Okay. So it successfully implemented a complete user account system for Catalyst. It's been created. It did all this stuff. Okay, great. It did all this. I wonder if it created like the front end elements. That would be pretty interesting. Uh, okay. So now I need to see this branch in GitHub to create a pull request to visit this URL. Cool. Okay. Let's visit this URL. Okay, awesome. So this is all of the changes in GitHub that uh, have been made. So that's super cool. So what I could probably do is, so I don't really know how to do this, to be honest. Uh, what I'm gonna do is go to cursor and say, pull this code down and run it, and I wanna see what this looks like. Okay, so what it's gonna do is it's gonna use get to pull the information from GitHub here. So what happened is Claude Code went and pulled the information from GitHub over here into the cloud, did a whole bunch of stuff, pushed it back to that central repository, which is GitHub. Now we're gonna pull it from GitHub down into uh, our computer and run it. And so it's gonna fetch this branch and then it will run it and we can come over here and see the changes that have been made. Cool. So do you wanna check out this branch? Yes, I do. So it's switched to this branch and it's running. And if we come over here and refresh, we have login. Pretty incredible, huh? Okay, so that's it. On mobile and on desktop, same experience. The big difference, the big mindset shift is now you're working in agents. I would very much suggest big, huge projects like this and chunks of code that will take minutes and hours when using agents and save the smaller details and the fine tuning for on your machine when you're actively coding so you can make those finer adjustments, okay? It works whether it's a marketing project or a development project, we've seen it both ways, okay? So uh, I think this is a huge change in the accessibility of software development and any kind of agentic work with Claude Code. Claude Code is most of my focus in AI these days, as much as I love things like ChatGPT and Gemini and Manus, uh, Manus probably still is my go-to kind of one-shot thing, but for much more complex AI systems, Claude Code is just the winner for me these days. Uh, but I'd love to hear from you. How are you using Claude Code? How do you see Claude Code for mobile and for web changing how you use it? Is it more accessible? Is it less accessible because it's kind of like only agents now? Tell me what you think in the comments below. I'm Craig Hewitt, this is 100 Days of AI. Thanks so much for watching. If you're enjoying, please like, subscribe, smash the bell, and I'll see you tomorrow.